We're doing water infiltration tests today using a single ring infiltrometer. We're in basically what is a roadside ditch, but this would closely assimilate or approximate CRP ground, Conservation yes. Reserve. Yes. Doesn't have any grazing activity, no mm -hmm. cropping activity on it whatsoever. It's been this way for decades. Right five decades. And the ring that we're using, it's, it's six inches in system. diameter yep. and six inches in length. We drive about three inches in the ground, leave three inches exposed. And that allows us to approximate about an inch of rainfall. This is a great test to assess soil aggregation, soil aggregate structure because that determines uh, the ability to soil to capture and store water. We've got a six inch ring. It's driven three inches in the ground. It's six inches long. We've lined it with a piece of plastic. We're going to put 440 milliliters of water in there. Now, Kent, the reason okay. that we use the plastic is to keep the water from disturbing the soil so that we can get our most accurate infiltration, infiltration. test. Ready. Set. Go. I would say right about there. So we're at 16.8 seconds. Which is really quite good. Okay, so we're going to do the ring infiltrometer again here in a complex cover crop uh, that the cows have raised once uh, this year. One, two, three, go. Two minutes, 41 seconds. That's still very good. Well, look at that. Sweet. We'll take it. One, two, three, go. Minute 35. So soil function is the ability of the soil to capture and store That's correct. water. So sand's going to infiltrate rapidly just because of the physical nature of the soil. We want to capture that and hold it, like you said, in that rhizosphere yes. so that it's available for plants and not entering that groundwater. In sand, we do want to slow down that infiltration rate. So what we're doing is we're testing for hard pan and compaction in the soil. So we have hit a hard pan layer that it will not penetrate. Nine to 10 inches deep, very significant hard pan that we cannot penetrate. Again, this field has been continuous corn on corn, conventional tillage for more than 50 years now. So we're taking about a six inch depth of soil here. Uh, we are looking for earthworms and other insects. We've got some old buried corn residue in here that's not even decomposing. We see plating, how it falls apart there, like in layers. Yeah, certainly quite a bit of plating, little to no aggregation. The aroma, is it uh, metallic or acidic? Slightly metallic. So that would mean it's bacteria centric with very little fungal activity which is precisely what the structure of the soil and the lack of aggregation tells us as well. Definitive lack of, of earthworm activity. You have a lot of last years and probably even year before undegraded residue mm -hmm. and that's even persisting into the soil strata itself. We see that there's been very little degradation and we even see the pith in pith the center. It's still there. It, it's still there. Mm -hmm. This should, if we had good biological activity, this should be completely degraded by this time. Mm -hmm. We're not hearing the bird life overhead. We're not hearing the insects. Diversity, there is none. We have one plant. So out of the four plant functional groups, grasses, legumes, forbs, and, er and uh, woody species, we, uh, we only have one, we have a grass. There's a definitive lack of anything else growing underneath this canopy. So if we use our probe here, that is it. So we hit the hard pan here, and not much different than the cornfield. It's about eight to 10 inches where we hit a hard pan. So we've got roots, we've got more aggregation. So there we see our aggregation, soil aggregation, clinging to our roots. But aggregation, little beads, little roundish, just lots of, look at them all in there. Lots and lots and lots of aggregates. 
We see very low diversity here. Again, predominantly a three to four species. Brome, Kentucky bluegrass, occasional yellow sweet clover or alfalfa, and some quack grass, and that's about it. In the lack of grazing activity, not only do we have low diversity, but we also have uh, low biomass production. No insect activity Nothing. evident. I can't, I can't find no any. No spiders, no ants. No beetles. There's a worm right there. So I see a lot of aggregation in this soil. It also has a very rich earthy aroma. Both of those are strong indicators of high levels of fungal activity in the soil. We've already found seven, in just, yeah, seven earthworms in just a single spade full of soil just six inches deep. This is filled with insect activity and we not only see a high level of plant species diversity here but we also have three different functional plant class groups yes. represented in this mix we've got several different grasses several different legumes and several different forbs so this is a one-year perennial pasture and we're already seeing significantly higher levels of microbial activity, fungal activity, soil aggregate, earthworm activity, insect activity, and of course we've got a much higher level of plant species diversity after just a single year compared to a roadside ditch that has been that way for 50 plus years and a cornfield that's been managed the same way for 50 plus years.